Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It's a pleasure seeing everybody here again today. As we come together in one accord, and we're going to try to get some understanding on Yekezekiel, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, the end of days. And again, it's a pleasure seeing everybody here today. I can't thank the Father enough for seeing all of these beautiful faces here. Yeah. 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 Great, great, excellent. Uh, anybody have any testimonies they would like to share with us today? How the Father's been blessing them? How many round off kicks can you do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know how many spinning back fists you can do? Well, uh, this week I, uh, I had to do perform the performance reviews because I'm the manager at my job. Okay. So I had to, like, this is the first time. Upper management let me do it alone without them shadowing me. Uh huh. And uh, the guys under me were pretty rough, you know. I don't trust you, I don't trust management. I, it was real, like, they were just throwing stuff at me, and I'm uh -huh. just sitting here, like, they were expecting upper management to be in the room with me. And when it was just me, they were like, they, they caught them off guard. They had all this pent up rage that they wanted to throw at upper management, and I had to, like, take it. <laughs> and the younger me was not upset and would have tried to, like, defend, like, mm -hmm. like Defend myself, like you know, you you don't come in on time, you don't, you know, like right. But then there's just, there's been so much going on with me. I just I really didn't have the energy to like respond to everyone's complaints. But it showed me that that everything we go through is to help us mature and do better than yeah. when we were a little younger. Because I know about the, just me last year wouldn't have been able to handle what I'm going through now. So I praise y'all for growth, and I know that more is on the way. I just pray to just remain humble and, and, and gain as much of the lesson that he's showing me daily as I can. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Very good. So this is a, um, a chance for you to move up. and. Um, well, and, I've been moved to this position now like uh, three years, but usually upper management shadows me whenever we're doing, so it's two of us sitting here. Mm -hmm. But if coming in got so busy and so much people are at home that you know, they really don't got the time to babysit. So they're like, yeah, you, you do it. And I was like, uh, okay. I'm still in the same position, but it's more responsibility. Okay, okay, all right, hallelujah. It's all about growth and development, yeah. as you said. So um, hallelujah, the Father continued to baruch you, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, because that's exactly what um, Solomon asked for first, before anything, you know, yes. wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, so he can be able to manage um, the father's people. So uh, you're in your little world now. You know, we want to make sure that uh, you have all the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to manage your situation there. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank the Father for life, health, and strength. Always, yeah. always. Keeping us throughout these troubling times. We hear people are passing away all the time. Yes. Yeah. I just want to thank the Father for Another day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very good. Very good. I'd like to say the same. I, you know, thank the Father uh, for just, you know, life, not just, but thank Him for life, health, and strength, you know. Thank Him for His goodness, His kindness, and His mercy, how He protects us, and, um, uh, you know, from all hurt, harm, dangers, dangers seen and unseen, freak accidents and all, you know. Mm -hmm. Just thank the Father for it because... Like the coach, he says, so much is going on, and um, yes, more it is. If, uh, and times are bad, and you know, if you keep your eyes on the television set, you will think things are okay or get back to normal. But they have to throw that out there to keep you distracted and just believe that, so they won't cause mass panic. Mm -hmm. And every day, you, what you hear about these COVID numbers, they're going up and up. And I, you know, I work at uh, Emory University, and you know, they work very close with the CDC. Let me tell y'all something. Mm -hmm. These numbers on a day that I'm talking about just where I am. Nah. These numbers get ugly. I'm talking about on a daily basis, you would not believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it, it's looking scary for winter. This winter um, COVID season, and when uh, Dr. Fauci, all the, most people want to think the numbers are manipulated well. Man, it's a lot of sick people out here. And these numbers are getting worse. They're really getting bad. And so, you know, I thank the Father for how he has just, you know, protected us um, through it all. 
and uh, thank the most for my uh, little bro uh, here, uh, bro Michael. Come, you know, been faithfully coming with me on Shabbat. You know, I enjoy yeah. spending that time with them. You know, coming out and I thank you guys for the, for the love and support that you all have given from you know this side of you know making them feel welcome and all that. I really appreciate it. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just gonna buy them later. <laughs> <laughs> Say. Okay. Everything I've been putting my group home through, they're actually keeping me in there because I, after I get kicked out this group home, I won't have nowhere to go. Because every group home I go to, I just act up, act up, get kicked out, go to jail, go home. My family just wants my money. But thank God that, that they're keeping me in there. Okay, hallelujah, very good. Yeah. It's going to work out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we have a great war right here, a mentor. So uh, yeah. as long as you stay under his his guideship, his, his, just listen to him. Everything's going to work out well for you. Hallelujah. Yeah, you have to listen. That's going to be key. Anybody else? If anybody likes to ride or anything, if you want to. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. He likes to, he likes to ride. Yeah. Thankful that um, I think this is the first week that I started. Speed race, let me go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think this is, this is the first week I started doing so I just feel a little bit every day. He seems to be awake more during the car ride, but I'm thankful that everything is going well. Okay, hallelujah. Very good. Awesome. Yeah, what you got? Uh, okay, what you say? <laughs> We were letting you know that he was going to be preaching all the way through. The <laughs> 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 prophesied. Okay, hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Okay, Mr. McCoy, we're going to blow the show far seven times. We're going to face the east, and we're going to have our elder Zabu to bring us in with prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, who would show them up, 
You give them strength, Father. We thank you for healthy children in this congregation, Father. It seems like we are growing, Father, from within, and we thank you for that. I pray that you continue to bring those unto us whom you would have here, whom you would pick, not that we would pick, that you would pick, Father. We thank you for Michael, Father, because you brought him unto us, Father, and if you bring him unto us, that means he has just as much to give to us as we have to give to him. And so we thank you and we praise you for him, Father. We ask that you look in upon the lives of these Murrays, Father, who uh, they have given us them over to us, Father, that we might be able to uh, use them once again to gain knowledge on, unto you, Father, or, or of you, Father. We thank you for your set-apart spirit. We thank you for uh, your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, Father, and ask you to uh, continue to prepare us for him when he returns. We praise you, we magnify you, we lift you up, and again ask that you would meet us here. And your son, Yahushua Mashiach's name, we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Your brother's going to give me that beautiful food and say, Okay. I'll trade it for the house. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing? Great. All right. Hallelujah. So that means that we have another opportunity, like I always say, to get it right. Because tomorrow is not guaranteed. So we want to make sure that we do our very best every single day. Every day. We want to take nothing for granted. Absolutely nothing. We go ahead and get our logged in here and we'll go ahead and get services started yeah let's make sure that our phones are turned down or turned off so that there will be no interruptions in today's service of Yekezekiel or Ezekiel the 39th chapter Yay, all right. Okay, so Mr. McCall, let's go ahead and get started. Like I do in all of the classes that I do, I want to make sure that we give all esteem to the Father of Yahuwah for his love, his mercy, his kindness, and his generosity, all the things that he's been doing for us. That's our creed for the congregation of Yahshua all is that we always make sure we honor the Father first. And I just want to break down just a couple of things because I talk about this all the time, the love, the mercy, and kindness of the Father and how we can never be thankful enough for the things that he's doing for us. I want to look at first um, the importance of the Father's love and his kindness. His kindness and his love, his love and his kindness. We're going to have our executive, Moray, Moray Eliyahu, and we want the congregation of Yahshua all to follow along. We're going to go first to the book of Jeremiah, the book of Yahu. The 31st chapter, verses 1 through 3, and we want to try and see if we can get a good understanding on how we are indebted, how we are forever indebted to the Father because of his love and his kindness. So again, Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 3. Jeremiah 31, 1 through 3. Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu, 31, verse 1 through 3. At the same time, said Yahuwah, will I be the Elohim of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Right, hallelujah. I like to take my time and break down every single verse so that we make sure that everybody's on the same page. And um, with constructive reading, when you have now um, our chapters, we all do know that there was no such thing as chapters and mm -hmm. verses and, and periods and question marks, exclamation points, none of that. But when it says at that same time, that is also we're referring to something that's going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at that allotted time, saith Yahuwah, I will be an Elohim of all the families of Israel, Israel, all right, both northern and southern kingdom, both houses. So we're talking about reunification here. 
and they shall be my people. So just looking at verse one, what do you see? We see a reunification of both northern and southern kingdom. But when northern and southern kingdom are brought back together, that is called the what? Right, right. It's, it's, it's the whole house of Israel. But when we have northern kingdom and southern kingdom reunified, and I will be an Elohim or a mighty one to the nation of Israel, those are marriage terms. That's marriage. Like I've been saying from the beginning, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, this is all about a marriage. Oh, yeah. And the bride is always Israel. Oh, always yeah. Israel. And the groom is always the Mashiach. And the Mashiach brings us now back to the Father. Hallelujah. Okay, read on, please. Thus says Yahuwah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Is Israel when I went to cause him to rest. Right, and so thus said Yahuwah, the people which were left of the sword. So that means now that a lot of people now are not going to even make it to the wilderness. Because those that were left of the sword found grace or came, okay, in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Read on. Thus Yahuwah hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Right. And so we see those two words now. Everlasting love and with loving kindness have I drawn, which means to bring back the nation of Israel back into covenant relationship. And what's also interesting is that we have to pay close attention to is that it says, Yahuwah have appeared of old unto me. So Yeremiah now is telling us now, when we go back into the Elohim of old, we're talking about the same Elohim that made the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nothing has changed. And that is a clear indication to us to let us know that the covenant still exists to this very day. So when I do my classes now, Maury does the classes, we want to make sure at all times that we give all esteem to the Father for his love, his mercy, and his kindness. It is the same Elohim of old that made the covenant with our forefather Abraham. The same one. We also want to um, give thanks to the Father of Yahuwah for his mercy and his ultimate love gift. And the ultimate love gift is Yahusha HaMashiach. Hallelujah. All right. We can never thank the Father for that. Enough for that. For giving us his ultimate love gift, Yahusha HaMashiach, who is and was that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Israel. When was the first time or the first indication that we see where something or someone had to atone for the sins of the people. The very first time we see the word atonement or implications of the word atonement. In the garden, hallelujah. In the garden. Hallelujah. So we see that happening um, in the garden and we want to go to the book of Psalms. We're going to have Moray to read that. Yep, you right on time. That's what it says. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, no problem. So, Moray, if you can um, do Psalms 40 and 6, we want to try to get some more information on the Mashiach being that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Israel. So, 40 and 6, please. Psalms, Atel Halim, 40 and verse 6. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mm -hmm. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offering hast thou not required. Right. Hallelujah. Let me just pull it up right quick so I can follow along with everybody. 
because there was a whole lot that was going on there. Psalms 40 and 6. Sacrifice and offerings the Father did not desire for sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is talking about for sin now. It says, My ears has thine opened, burnt offerings and sin offerings has thou not required. So we know from the very beginning, mm -hmm. but we see now that the Levitical priesthood was instituted because of the sin with the golden calf. Oh, yeah. But that was only to be for a season until the coming of Yahushua HaMashiach, who is and was at atoning sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then it goes, you read verse 7 for me? Not yet. Okay, read on please. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So we have to identify who is the me because this individual now comes in the um, volume of the book. Mm -hmm. It is written of him. And when you go to verse 6 now, it talks about that this sacrificing to animals, not sacrificing to animals, but this sacrificing of animals now was only to be done for a time, only for a short period of time here. And then that would usher in the coming of the Mashiach. Now, to prove that, I'm going to read um, that very same verse, Psalms 40 and 6, in verse, in the, um, the Greek Septuagint, in LXX. It says now, um, sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared me. Mm -hmm. Hold burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou didst not require. So here we have now, the Septuagint, okay, which is over 500 years older than the Masoretic text. Uh -huh. Over 500 years older, but here it has now, but a body has thou preparest me, whole burnt offerings, and sacrifice for sin thou didst not require. Then it goes on to say, then I said, behold, I come in the volume of the book, which is Mashiach, and it was written of me. So if we go to the book of Hebrews, or the book of Ebri, mm -hmm. Uh, 10 and 5. Moray, if you could read that for me, please. Hebrews 10 and 5? Yes, Hebrews 10 and 5. Hebrews 10 and 5. The ruffling of pages. Okay, 10 and 5. Hebrews, Ebri, 10 and 5. Wherefore, when he cometh in the world, he said, Sacrifice an offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Hallelujah. Start at verse 1. Okay, so we can get a, a, a clear understanding oh, of yeah. what is going on here. Thank you. So that, that's very important. Yes. Hebrews, Hebrews 10, starting at verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. And not the very image of things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereto perfect. Right. So for the law was having a shadow, and we understand shadow pictures. When we have shadows now, um, even Shalomo, being that he's into photography and everything like that, when you take a picture at certain dis distances now because of the... Um, the range of the lens that you have, the closer that you're able to bring in the actual object, you can get a better view of it. But something that is far off, it might be what we call a shadow. And so as time progressed, mm -hmm. as it progressed now, we can see now the fulfilling of something much better. The picture now comes into um, better focus. And so now what was happening before the coming of the Mashiach, it was only a shadow of something better to come. So we should all be able to see the Mashiach now through a better set of lenses. Okay? For then would they have not ceased to be offered mm -hmm. because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. So when the Levitical priesthood, because that was their office, on the seventh month, the tenth day, when that priest now went into the Holy of Holies, and made that atonement for the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. was those sins still brought back into remembrance? Mm -hmm. Actually, they, they were. Because actually now, we see now the priest was able to only cover the sins. Mm -hmm. right. 
But now we see Yahukanah, the immersers, say, listen, you know what? Here now is the Mashiach. He actually removed the, the, the saints. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so now it was always an acknowledgement because the priest, he himself not being perfect, he had to make an atonement for himself, for his family, the rest of the Levites, the priests are there, then make an atonement for the people. But this was done continually mm -hmm. every single year. Hallelujah. But now with the Mashiach coming, and he died for our sins. Nobody can now hold us now responsible for things that happened 5, 6, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Especially now if the person now is not um, a continuance in the sin. Mm -hmm. He's not uh, perpetuating the same thing over and over again. Right. So as long as the person is not perpetuating the things over and over again, you cannot hold that person responsible for things that happened last year. Not even yeah. last week. Mm -hmm. But that person now would have to show that diligence, that love, that mercy and kindness. That's and that's good. recognizing Yahusha HaMashiach. Yeah. You're free. Yes. Okay, Maureen, read on, please. But in those sacrifices, that is a remembrance again, mm -hmm. made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Right. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Right, that's important. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Okay, but shalom offerings, okay, free will offerings, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But sin is transgression of the law. Sin is what got us kicked out of the garden. The whole thing from day one has always been about obedience. Everybody has to submit and understand the importance of obedience. Nothing that maketh a lie is going to make it into the kingdom. Read on. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Mm-hmm. To do thy will, O Elohim. To do the Father's will. To do the Father's will. And um, I'm glad that Shalomo is here. Shalom, um, is there anything that you want to um, expound upon? I was talking about earlier about seeing things um, under a better lens. Being that you're into um, camera work, mm -hmm. um, the different lenses that are used because... Seeing something from a distance, you might not be able to get a, a, the actual uh, object into uh, crystal clear focus. Right. But the better the lens, right. the better the lens, you can actually bring that object closer to you where you can now, like we have now today, like 4G and 5G. The TVs today are not like the TVs before. So mm -hmm. um, camera, mm -hmm. lighting, prophetic shadow pictures. What can you share with the congregation and helping us to understand the importance of looking at um, objects with a better lens? Well, Help us out here a little bit. I mean, you can you can bring some things even to my attention with better lenses. Well, more I think it's like you said, the better the lens, the clearer the object is. So if you have something that's far away and you're using a lens that only goes a certain distance, you're not going to be able to see that object in its purest and truest form. I mean, that's why we have the telephoto lenses. While they're able to take pictures of things from the sky and looking on, get full pictures of the whole landscape, or take pictures of the sun and the moon, and of the stars in the, in the sky, is because of those lenses. Those objects are so far away in the firmament. And so from down here, you have to have a lens that extends that far. So it's just like you said, Mark, um, looking, through, looking at things through a better lens makes the picture completely different. Completely clear. Hallelujah. And I think that's the reason why. Yes, sir. That's excellent. Yes, absolutely. And I believe that's the reason why a lot of people are having a hard time understanding um, the Mashiach in the New Testament and even in the Old Testament because they're using um, outdated equipment. <laughs> Basically, yeah. it's, it's what's <laughs> happening is outdated equipment. And if um, you're not using um, better equipment, you're not going to get full quality. 
because it's very important that we understand from beginning to end, this is talking about a mediator. There's no, there's no way you can go directly to the source, mm -hmm. even with electricity. And that's Zabud's uh, specialty there when we begin to understand electricity. There has to be um, a breaker. And what do you call that, like that in-between? Because you just can't have direct um, energy. There has to be a mediator. What do you call that, Maury? Is, uh, is it a conductor? Uh, it, it, there's something that breaks... The, the flow of energy because you can't have direct energy coming into your house. Right, no. And so it's so like a meter, breaker. So your meter comes in. The breaker is what cuts it completely off. Okay. It cuts it off like a slight switch. But the, um, uh, the that meter, okay, it lets you, it only lets a certain amount in. Right. You can get a, a reducer, a transducer, or, you know, different things. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much it. You got anything more right now? Oh, just think about what um, Elder um, was saying. Uh, you have to have something to channel the right current of energy because, right. you know, because you can blow stuff up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, if it's not the right amount of energy. Mm. And so um, I'm just thinking about this whole thing we're reading and how <laughs> the most how he makes it so plain. You're not going around him. Mm. Nah. You, 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 I, I don't know why people want to deduct the sun, the S-O-N, mm -hmm. from the works of the Most High. Mm. And the Father, he does not allow you to omit and go past his son and go straight to him. It has never been. You could not bypass the sacrifices of the Levitical priesthood or the priest, a high priest could not uh, bypass the sacrifice and go straight before you mm -hmm. Something had to be done even before the high priest could even enter in angrily and go before his presence. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing. That sacrifice, the sacrifice is your entrance to bring you before the Father. And I don't know, uh, you, the, the Father didn't <laughs> allow it then, he's not allowing it now. Absolutely. That is for sure. I, I, absolutely. Let's continue on. Okay, we're talking about the importance of Yahushua HaMashiach. A body was prepared. That body was Yahushua HaMashiach to be that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Yahshua. Let's also prove that in the book of Yahukanan, chapter 12, Mori verses 26 and 27. Yahukanan chapter 12. Yes, Yahukanan chapter 12. Verses 26 to 27. John, or Yehukadah, chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Mm -hmm. Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Everybody see what just happened in verse 27? A body has thou prepared me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then we read it from the Greek Septuagint, the LXX. And then we read the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verse 5. And now we have the Mashiach saying, Now is my soul troubled, or my Ruach is troubled, and what shall I say? Which is a question. Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I into this hour, uh, to this point now, because he's about to be that atoning sacrifice for the nation of Israel. Because all of those lambs that was being um, slaughtered, it was a representation for something greater to come, which was himself. A body has thou preparest me, and shall I now say, Father, listen, you know what? I don't want to do it. Listen, the Mashiach had to drink the cup. And also, Moray, verse 27 is very important because there are many people that say since we say he's the son of the father, he came walking into or came walking in um, his as a deity. And there, there was no way he would have felt pain or anything <laughs> on that tree. And I try to tell people, the father did not allow his son to come that way. 
Everything we feel on a human aspect or human level, his son had to feel and experience the same exact thing. Absolutely. This covenant or the fall of mankind was done from a, uh, a human aspect. Adam was a man. And the same way this was lost, it has to be gained or worn back in the same manner. Mm -hmm. This is why he's saying, uh, my soul is troubled. It ain't like he just wanted to get up there and die. <laughs> right. Because he knew he wasn't going to be feeling any pain or anything. You know that because he was saying he could call on how many angels from Shemayim. But the father didn't allow him to do that. He had to experience exactly what we had would have experienced. Did those animals that were sacrificed, did they come in some kind of form of deity where they didn't feel anything? <laughs> if that's the case, it's not a sacrifice. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely, Moray. You no, know, actually, let's go to the, uh, the book of Matthew, Yahoo, the 20th chapter, verse 28. The book of Matthew, the 20th chapter, verse 28. Let's see if we can get some more out of this whole thing with serving. Now that you bring that up. Okay. The book of Mati Yahu or Matthew, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 28th verse. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, mm -hmm. but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So now, now that we see the Mashiach, fulfilling his role and his responsibility in dying for the bride, which is the nation of Israel, what is now you believe your responsibility in returning into covenant relationship with the Mashiach, with the Father? What is now your responsibility? Because if he gave his all, his life for a ransom for you, it should be no problem for us now to totally, and listen to the word that I'm using, to totally submit to Torah. That's what a good bride does. She totally submits to her ish. Mm -hmm. As a collectively, as a collective body, the whole nation of Israel is supposed to now submit to the groom. Mm -hmm. As it is in heaven, so shall it be here on earth. It's going to take total submission from both parties. If not, you're not going to make it into the kingdom. It's just as clear cut as that. Real clear. Now, let's walk into Ezekiel the 39th chapter. Are there any questions so far with anything? Okay, um, let's walk into Ezekiel the 39th chapter, the end of days. I have a question. What does Revelation the 18th chapter verses 1 to 3 mean to you? And I want to ask three people. I want to ask first, I want Zabud uh, to read Revelation 8, the 18th chapter, verses 1 to 3. Then I would like um, Yonathan, our brother, to read Revelation, the 18th chapter, verse 1 to 3. And I would like for Tahariah to read verses 1 to 3. And I just want three definitions or three explanations on what does Revelation, the 18th chapter, verses 1 to 3 mean. And before we get that, the reason why um, I'm going to pose this question is because I had a, a, a real interesting conversation with Moray um, Shael out in Carolina. I think he's in um, Durham, Durham, North Carolina. And what he decided to do with this congregation was he said, well, listen, we've been here for a long time now. All right. I've been teaching. And it's got to the point where there's nothing really else for me to say at this point. Um, you've been sitting here for years now. And we've been going over the laws, statutes, and commandments and how to be obedient. So what he wants to do now is start to branch out and do more um, evangelist work. He wants to go out and minister to other congregations. And so... I didn't have any problems or issues with that. It's just that he said now, and I agree with him, he didn't want it to be a situation with the congregation now, um, or it's like, it's like a, a crutch where they're not expanding, they're not growing, they're not going out, bringing in mm -hmm. 
um, fruit into the assembly. It gets to a point now with everything where you now want to have to go out on your own and stand up for the Mashiach and also be shepherds in the vineyard. Because if we remember now, the Talmudin only stayed with the Mashiach for a certain limit of time, mm -hmm. roughly about a year, a year and a half. Then after that, it's time for you to go out and start to fish. It's time to be a big man now. You can't stay at home forever. Mm -hmm. Every man and every woman mm -hmm. is going to have to show some fruits of, you know, you're going to have to have some labor here. So we're going to have Zabu first to read Revelation, the 18th chapter, verses 1, one through 3. Uh, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from mm -hmm. Shalim, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Or it's a steam. And he cried uh, mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become a ha the habitation of devils, uh, and, the, and the hold of every foul spirit, in a cage, I mean, a cage of every unclean in hateful bird. Okay, so when you give your explanation, everybody has a minute, all right, so that we can um, keep it rolling here. Read on. Uh, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. Right. So, um, what do you have there? What What is your understanding of what's going on in um, Revelation 1 through 3? Okay. Oh, we go, actually, we're going to have Zabu to go first. Mm -hmm. He's going to read it, give his explanation. Then we want um, Yonathan to read it and give his explanation. And then we want Teheria to um, read it and give her explanation. Uh, oh, did you read verse 4? No. Uh, read verse uh, 4. 4. And I heard another voice from Charmaine saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. And... Uh, that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay. You know, Maury, uh, well, like, I think we'd want to do we understand what that means. It basically means that uh, this nation uh, that we are in, or uh, if we're talking about this particular nation, which I believe we are, uh, that we are, are uh, uh, that's committed great sin against Yahuwah and it has brought all the other nations along with it and they all bow down to this uh, uh, this evil nation and um, the part I think we're probably really looking at the part of come out from among them what do we do mm -hmm. and uh, it can be interpreted two ways one would be to physically come out and leave and go to somewhere else the other would be uh, you know well, I believe there's a physical part, but I also believe there's a spiritual part where you literally have to turn your way, your back away from sin and only follow Torah. Right. And that's the only thing. So that's my thought on it all. Um, period. Okay, yeah, because this is a very controversial um, chapter. In verses 1 through 4, I've heard a lot of um, understandings on it. So I want to get Yonathan's, um, his reading of Revelation 1 through 4 and give me in a minute what is his understanding of Revelation 18th chapter verses 1 through 4. And the reason why I'm doing this is because um, all of us here ha ha have families. And so it is our responsibility as men to make sure that we put our families in the best situation with our understanding according to Scripture. So... Um, if we can get our good brother Yonathan, if he can do one through four and give us his um, his Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, 
understanding of what's going on. You might need to reread or just give my explanation. You know what? Um, at the same time, yes. That's just yeah. You can just do that. Um. Well, I know in earlier parts of the book, it was you know when when uh Yah has said that the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Mm -hmm. Now here it's saying that all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of fornication, and it, it says her in verse five it says her sin has reached unto heaven. So Babylon has used up all this grace to sin <laughs> and and finally has has unleashed the full judgment, uh, pressed down and and uh, dense to be poured out and is gonna receive it. You know, there's no there's, there's no more grace that should be found for it. Um, in other in other scriptures it says Yah says I would have healed Babylon, but uh she is not healed, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, okay, hallelujah. So, what about that? What do you feel about that part that says come out from among them? Do um, you think it's a physical or a spiritual or a both? Or? Well, I feel that it's going to be like it was before, where it's not, it might not necessarily be of our own accord. Yes, some people will be able to leave of their own accord, but there's a lot of Hebrew America that is not able to just get up and go. Right. Because of the way Babylon is set up, everything requires funds. Mm -hmm. So I believe um, this, it, it will be fulfilled as the scripts say, you know, the saviors upon Zion, I will send fishers. Like, I think um, the same way how people miss the Messiah because they didn't understand the scriptures mm -hmm. we may have to keep our understanding open so we can see what Yah is doing in the midst um, I was talking with someone that said yeah we read the text but there's a, there's also context in between each word you, right. see, you see the black letters but there's a white, whole white page and there's a lot of context in there so I think we should uh, keep our understanding open to, to so we can the scripts will lead us in the direction of, of, on where to look and, and and how to tell that something is gonna something is about to happen. Right. And, and then just hey, look at the season. It didn't give us a color. We know what color the fruit's supposed to be, but we don't know how big or how small mm -hmm. the tree, the, the, you know, the fruit is gonna be on the on the tree or on whatever plant that we've planted. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. Okay. Real quick, okay. Mark, I would just like to also say that. Something that just came into my head is that uh, if all the nations have drunk uh, from, uh, uh, you know, uh, Babylon, uh, that means all the nations are under judgment. So where are you going? Uh, and destruction is coming upon everything and everybody, everywhere. Right, exactly. And so this, but um, like you said, verse 4 is going to be very um, interesting. So uh, to Harry, so we can get some, some more info on this. Um, what is your understanding of Revelation, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4? If you want to do 5, that's no problem. But um, we know that she's going to be judged. I mean, that's self-explanatory when we read the rest of the, um, the verse here, the verses. But what is your understanding so far of Revelation, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 4? Four, with special attention, obviously, on verse four. Okay, um, so in verse two, when it says Babylon, the great is fallen, you know, back in those days, Babylon was a specific kingdom, mm -hmm. and even at this point, it basically spread to the entire world. So, of course, all the nations have drunk, all of them have sinned, and they are um, all partaking of this wicked system. And for verse four, when it says, come up out of her mouth, First, it could be like spiritually separating yourself from, you know, in the land that you are in, following Torah and doing your best to keep the commandments. But then at some point, it's going to have to be a physical separation to where you, you know, leave um, the place or leave the system as best you can. Um, because, you know, if you are in the way, you're going to get hit by the place because like, end of verse 4 that you receive not of her place so the 
um, children of Israel, they were in Egypt, they were separated in Goshen, so they didn't get the place, but they did have to leave anyway. So right. I think that's, that's another stage that's going to happen. And then, like, I feel like the final, final stage is when possibly we actually see this angel that's speaking, saying, come out of her, and then we are, like, I guess, taken to, um, you know, a place where we can, you know, follow the soul and not be bothered by the nations. But even if you think about it, how the children of Israel, they left Egypt, which was a wicked land, but they did go into Canaan, which had bunch of wicked people too. So even the land that we go to has to be purged before, you know, we can fully have, you know, our own land where we're following the Torah and following um, the Torah completely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not being biased, but to hear you. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Very good. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Very good. Um, Revelation 18, verses 1 through 4. And after these things, I saw another messenger come down from heaven. All right. He was having great power, and the earth was enlightened or lightened with his esteem. This is what I found very important. So we have a messenger coming down from Shamayim. Pay very close attention that this messenger cried with a mighty one and with a strong voice saying, John the Revelator was on the island of Patmos. This is a future event that's going to happen because we have Babylon first. Then it talks about the daughter of Babylon, mm -hmm. not the first Babylon. That wicked sea Babylon, okay, is also now with the Medo-Persian Empire. Mm -hmm. It was also with the Greeks and, and also with the Romans. Mm -hmm. That's just the gist of it. Me, I personally believe that when we talk about Babylon, we're talking about America, okay? Me personally. And the reason why I say that is because America has an embassy on every country in the world. She's a world superpower. Who can make war with me? I mean, she, I mean, she's the ultimate. And she has allies with her. Nobody can move without America. Anytime America can say, listen, you know what? We're going to send um, a boycott of another country mm -hmm. and send warships to say, listen, you know what? Nobody can cross this border because we're going to starve Iraq. We're going to starve out Iran, any country. Mm -hmm. America has that power to do it. Mm -hmm. This lets me know that she's a world superpower. Mm -hmm. Now, with my understanding of that, it began to say, now Babylon the Great, now she has fallen, is fallen, and has become a habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit. Homosexuality, mm -hmm. okay, lesbianism, um, bestiality, L what, what is it? Um, LGBTQ, all of the stuff like that. I mean, you can do abortions here. Anything you want to do, you can do it here in America. Everything. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do. They did pass the law. I heard out in California, if a girl, a young girl is about, what, 14 to 15 years old, she can actually not have intercourse with a grown man. Don't even have any, she don't need no consent. It's terrible when your daughter can go to school because they don't want to invade the child's privacy where she can go to guidance counselors, all right, and get an abortion without mommy and daddy knowing anything about it. Mm -hmm. I'll go one step further. Uh -huh. Your insurance will pay for it. Wow. That you pay for, and you don't even have access to those records. Woo! Yeah. That's she can something. Get a prescription. She can get medication underneath your insurance, and you can't find out what that medicine is. That you pay for every month. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. And that's a shame. And this is, is what's going on. I remember my daughter, she was sharing with me, um, well, daddy, they was teaching in school that even if the child was disciplined at home, the child can go back to school the next day and say, listen, you know what? My parents disciplined me. They beat me, whatever it is that like that. They can call a child protective agency program on you. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> I mean, there is so much that goes on here. Here in America, this is the habitation of disagreeable beings and the whole of every foul spirit in a cage of unclean and hateful birds. Mm -hmm. For all nations have drunken of the uh, wine of the wrath of her fornication, pornography, um, lesbianism, anything. All of this stuff is done here, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice. There was one voice, now verse 2 says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of all sins and that you receive not of her plagues. I totally agree that there needs to be a spiritual departure, meaning that it's going to get to the point where I don't believe that it would be a good idea to send your children to public schools. Sure. All right. They teach in the public schools that it's okay for mommy to have two mommies. Mm -hmm. All right. Two daddies. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine now sending your children over to a friend's house to spend over the weekend True. and there's two men at night laying in the bed. Mm -hmm. You cannot say anything against them. Come on now. Really? This is what's being teached and this is what's being done in our society. So there's going to come a point now there has to be a spiritual understanding where we have to now be able to discern who we keep company with. Exactly. Very important. Now, once we, if there's a spiritual awakening, should there also be a physical awakening, awakening now where Israel literally needs to Seven. leave the premises? Mm -hmm. That's if he works to go with the faith. It, 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 exactly. Faith without works are dead. Mm -hmm. Um. Go to the book, more of, um, we can stay in Revelation, unless you have something that you want to say. Okay, Revelation, the 18th chapter, verse 8. Revelation 14 and 8. Revelation 14 8? Mm -hmm. 18 8. Oh, you mean 14 8, more? Um, what did I say here? 14 and 8, excuse me. Revelation 14, verse, make sure I got it right here. 14, verse 8, yes. Revelation 14 chapter verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of her wrath, uh, of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Right, hallelujah. Now go to Revelation the 13th chapter verse 18. This is the one right here. What is going on? Revelation, let me just get it right mm -hmm. quick, Moray. I want to um, get some feedback from the congregation and those that are listening abroad. Revelation, the 14th, 13th chapter, excuse me, verse uh, 18. Revelation, chapter 13, verse 18. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three scores, and six. Right. So his number is six, six, six. When we begin to look at what's going on with... Um, this coronavirus. And we see this whole thing coming up where it's being pushed that everybody at some point is going to have to take this vaccine. No man's going to be able to buy and no man's going to be able to sell unless he has this mark <laughs> on his right hand or on his uh, forehead. When I look at the word mark, Okay, it's the uh, Greek word karagma. 
it means a stamp and imprinted mark. It's the Strong's of the um, 5480. It means a stamp and an imprinted mark of the mark stamp on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the Antichrist. When I looked at that word a little bit more, it has, let me see, what do we have here? Um, it's the Strong's number 5481. The is an instrument used for engraving or carving. The mark stamped upon that instrument or wrought out onto it a stamp or an uh, impression. And then it has another um, definition. It means a pale or stake, a rampart. And when you go to the strong definition, sharpened to a point of scratching the surface. And so the, the definition just sounds too familiar to me, where now you have the point where something is now being printed, stamped, or marked upon the skin. And if you don't have that, you won't be able to buy or to sell. Mm -hmm. Whenever you get to the point, because I remember going out to a restaurant a couple of days ago, and Terry, she keeps reminding me because I keep forgetting. They have the signs mm -hmm. on the door, Moray. Right? If you don't have the mask on, you can't buy, sell, or do any type of transactions mm -hmm. unless you have that mask on. The question is, is that the beginning signs of the mark of the beast? If you can't have services unless you have this thing wrapped right, right around your face. Mm -hmm. w w what are we going to do? Maury had talked about a couple of days, uh, months ago, is that we were asking for the Father to give us just a little bit more time to prepare. With this time in preparing, what are we to do once it gets to the point where it becomes mandatory, where you now have to take the vaccine. What does it mean when it says, now come out of her, my people? But then the question becomes, now where do you go? The Mashiach said that when you see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, mm -hmm. flee to the mountains. But this is the thing Jerusalem has been destroyed. Jerusalem is also synonymous with the people. Mm, let's say that again, Maury. Jerusalem is also synonymous with the people. With the people. And so we see now when Jerusalem was compassed about with armies and Jerusalem was actually destroyed in 70 AD, a lot of Israel did literally run up to the mountains. When you read that in the book of Josephus, they ran up into Masada. And so there was a physical departure because Israel knew the times and the seasons. When Donald Trump, when he was asked by Joe Biden, to denounce white supremacy, Donald Trump didn't do it. He didn't do it. What is going on with these debates when we see Donald Trump is, is saying words like, um, st not stand down, but hold back. He, it's like he's making mm -hmm. implications to these white supremacist groups, fall back for now, hold back right now. When we begin to see now what happened out there in, uh, was it in Michigan when they was trying to, yep. this white supremacist group now was trying to kidnap a governor. Exactly. A governor. They're talking about civil unrest. It's been alleged, and my argument is this, I would rather be prepared than not prepared. Exactly. Mm. What is going on when it's been alleged that November the 3rd, if Donald Trump is not going to run a second term, there's going to be chaos. 
Zabud and I, we had talked about it. What well, he said that uh, with Donald, I mean, with, uh, with Obama, if Obama makes it to president, there's going to be civil unrest. But there's something a little bit different here. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is talking about making America great again. All right. And great again does not include Israelites at all. <laughs> not at all. You know? All right. We see now Israel being compassed about with armies because we're being killed. Okay, like, like I, I mean, it's open season on both the Israelite man and the Israelite woman. So there was a time when the Israelite woman could seek some type of justice or loyalty from the, uh, from the adversary because his job now was to destroy the Hebrew family. And now, uh, what's the woman's name? Uh, what's the woman that uh, that got shot? Um, Breonna with Taylor. Breonna Taylor. Breonna Taylor yeah. This is what I saw with Breonna Taylor. The adversary, these Amalekites, these Jewish people, these white, you know, whatever you want to call these people here, mm -hmm. he no longer has use for the Israelite woman anymore. He has no use for you anymore. That's good. Because what happened now was that there was no justice with her death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No justice at all. There was a white woman that yeah. almost got shot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost got shot. Mm -hmm. There was charged now for reckless endangerment. Mm -hmm. But for the killing of Breonna Taylor, nah. No. <laughs> The Israelite man and the Israelite woman, your life don't mean anything. Yeah, Maury, uh, I think you need to expound on that a little bit. Uh, what happened was the bullet, they shot, and the bullet went, I guess, almost hit the white woman. Uh huh. And it, and it went into, and they got, they got charged for that. Right. But the actual killing of Brianna, when, when the other bullets had killed Brianna, uh, Taylor, I think. Yes. They didn't, it didn't, they didn't get charged for that. No. Uh, so this was the same incident. Right. Yeah. 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 You tore up a good piece of drywall. Yeah. You know what? Okay. And so, you know, we can charge you for that mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the life of a white woman, okay, mm -hmm. that almost got shot. Mm -hmm. He has completed his mission in grooming the Israelite woman, excuse me, and the Israelite man that yes. those two yes. should not be a couple. Yes. They can walk together. Yes. He succeeded. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I just wanted to get everybody's um, opinion on what is going on and what is it that you actually see that's going on in Revelation, the, um, the 18th chapter, verses um, um, 1 through 4. Let's continue on with this here. Um, the book of Ezra, the 7th chapter, verses 1 through 11. You have that, Maureen? Yes, hold on. Okay, 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter. Because I'm trying to walk us into Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, and I'm only going to go to about maybe four verses because I just want to take my time with this because I'm trying to paint a picture. Second Ezra, the 7th chapter, 1 through 11. And pay very close attention to this. Very close attention. Yes, Second Ezra, oh, second. Yep. chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, and then Moray is going to do verse 20. Second Ezra, the seventh chapter, beginning at verse 1 through 11. Yeah, listen how, listen how important this walk is. Read on. And when I had made an end of speaking these words... There, am I on the right way, y'all? Yes, sir. Okay, then. There was sent unto me an angel which had been sent unto me the night afore. And he said unto me, Up, Edris, and hear the words that I am come to tell thee. Okay, so pay attention to these words now. Read on. And I said, Speak on, my L. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place. True, that's true. Uh -huh. That it might be deep and great. Hallelujah. But put the case, the entrance where 
were narrow and like a, let me read that over here. But put the case, mm -hmm. the entrance were narrow and like a river. Okay. Who then could go into the sea to look upon it and to rule it. That's a question. If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? So everybody understands that now. In order to get to the broad, you have to go through the narrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. There is also another thing. A city is built. Oh, my phone did some crazy there. What verse am I holding uh, Verse 6. 7 Sorry, and 6. No came on. I talked too loud. It said, there is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field. Mm -hmm. And it's full of all good things. All right. The city is not full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow. How big is it? Narrow. Okay. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall. All right. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand. Okay. And on the left, a deep water. Okay. So we see how dangerous this is, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to get to the broad. But in order to get to the broad, now you're going to have to go through the narrow. Read on. And, on, and one only path between them, both. Even between the fire and the water, so small that there could be, I mean, so small that there could but one man go there at once. So what just happened here? Wow. Anybody want to share? What just happened here? Yeah, absolutely. So let me share something with you, okay? <laughs> this walk is so serious. Yes. Is that I'm responsible at the end of the day for me. We can go out and we can talk about scriptures all day long. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's going to be everybody's responsibility to read and get an understanding of Torah. We have wives, we have children, but at the end of the day, listen, you know what? Reverend John John said, mm -hmm. it's okay to do X, Y, and Z. You would not be able to use that as an excuse mm -hmm. at all. My husband said this, my husband said that, my wife said this, my wife said that. Listen, unless there's some type of mental disorder with you, okay, then you would not be able to use that as an excuse. You will be held responsible for everything that you do. Hallelujah. I would not be able to say, listen, or you would not be able to say, listen, you know what? Well, um, hey, you know what? Um, put in a good word for me. You made it through. Put in a good word for me that the Father will also bring me in. That's not going to happen at all. Teheria is not going to happen. Zabud is not going to be, it's not going to happen. Yonathan is not going to, it's, it's just not going to happen. Every man, woman, and child is going to be weighed according to his and her deed. Everybody is going to have to walk that path because it's a narrow path. A narrow path. Only one man, one person at a time. Mm -hmm. That's how serious it is. Because on one side, there's water, deep water, and on the other side, okay, it's fire. But this narrow road now, it leads to a big city, mm -hmm. and it's full of all good things. Read on. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, mm. if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? Right, so there remains an inheritance. You might lose your wife. You might lose a uh, relationship with your children, house, cars, people that you have known for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Let me share something with you. According to scripture, some of our enemies would be those that lay right yes. next <laughs> to us in the bed. Yep. That's where your enemy is going to be. David said he understood his enemies. But it was one that broke bread with me, mm -hmm. sat at my table, mm -hmm. and said, I keep, and said, a Koti, uh -huh. that said, Ish, and said, Isha. She looked at you dead in your eyes and said, Listen, you know what? I love you. And I got your back. And lo and behold, that same person stabbed you in your back. This is our serious. This walk is. Meaning now, 
If we were out in the wilderness and such a person portrayed those type of behavioral traits, you cannot have a person like that amongst you. That person is a traitor. And the scriptures tell us now, traitors, okay, there's, there's consequences to traitors. Read on. Because for their sakes I made the world. Okay. Uh, Did I skip in? Yeah. Okay. And I said, it is so, you will. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So Israel's portion of is an inheritance but Israel is going to have to be tried. Yes. Each and every one of us is going to have to be tried. So we are tribulation. I want to remind everybody as we go into Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, there's an inheritance. But before you get into this big city, we all going to be tried. Guaranteed. <laughs> Read on. Because for their sake, I made the world. For Israel's sake, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Right, verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. For there be many that perish in this life <laughs> because they despise the law of Yahuwah right. that is set before them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, let me go, I'm going to read the third book. This is the third book. There's first and second, but there's an extra, there's another book. Um, third book. Can I'm, I read 21 before you go to Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 21. Absolutely. For Yahuwah hath given straight commandment to uh -oh. such as came, Israel, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. I'm glad that you brought that out, Moray, because we're about to talk about some consequences here. Read down to verse 25, please. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things, mm -hmm. and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High, that he is not wow. and do not his ways. By his law have they despised and denied his covenants. Mm -hmm. In his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore address for the empty are empty things <laughs> and for the full are the full things. That is so self-explanatory. Verse 25, listen. And therefore Ezra, for the empty those that are out, mm -hmm. they will receive nothing, are empty things. And for the full are the full things. Just listen to this right quick, uh, Mr. Picard. Uh, this is the book of Ezra, third Ezra, uh, the fourth chapter. I'm going to read verses one through eight. You say the third Ezra? Yes. Uh, uh, that group. Um, that, that was second Ezra that we just got finished mm -hmm. reading. So the next one's going to be third Baruch. Third Baruch on the fourth chapter, verses one through eight. And I, Baruch, said, Before, Behold, Yahuwah, thou didst show me great and wonderful things. And now, show me all things for the sake of Yahuwah. And the messenger said unto me, Come, let us proceed. And I proceeded. And the messenger from that place about 185 days journey, he took him. And he showed me a plain and a serpent, which appeared to be 200, uh, they have plethora in length. And he showed me Hades, which is hell. And his appearance was dark and ad, um, abominable. And I said, who is this dragon? And who is this monster around him? And the messenger said, the dragon is he who eats the bodies of those who spend their life wickedly. And he is nourished by them. And this is Hades or hell, which itself also closely resembles him. And that it also drinks about a cubit from, from the sea, which does not sink at all, that's sick at all. Baruch said, How does 
I say, pray this, show me which is the tree. This is important now because we're going back to the book of um, Genesis. <coughs> Excuse me. I pray thee, show me which is the tree which led Adam astray. The messenger said it to me, it is the vine which the angel Samuel planted. Again, this is the tree or the vine that the messenger uh, or the disagreeable being Samuel planted. Mm -hmm. Whereas Yahuwah Elohim was angry and he cursed him and hit, he cursed him and his plant. Um, while he was on this count, he did not permit Adam to touch it. And therefore, the adversary, um, being envious, deceived him through this vine. The reason why I brought that out here is that I want everybody to understand that we are going into this a little bit later because I just want to read about four verses in the book of um, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter. That tree of good and evil that was inside of the garden, like Moray and I have been teaching, the only way that the adversary can have access into um, a set-apart city, someone would have to now give them access access to the garden. Mm -hmm. And it's our responsibility as temples, we don't want to give the adversary access into our temple. Mm -hmm. We see now that Eve, a poor at the time, mm -hmm. gave the adversary entrance into the garden. That tree that was being planted now, the tree of good and evil, was planted by the adversary and not by the Father. Mm -hmm. if, because what, what happens now is that when we see New Jerusalem coming down from out of Shammai, uh -huh. it may mention now the tree of life was also there. It never makes mention when New Jerusalem is coming down that the tree of good and evil will be there. Anything that is good and evil is called a mixture. Mm -hmm. The Father does not deal with mixture. The mixture of clothing, the mixing even of us with other people. Mm -hmm. We're not even supposed to mix our animals, clothing, anything like that. Anything that is a mixture is a lie. The father did not plant a lie in the garden. Hallelujah. Lies come about through giving the adversary an entrance in. And this is the reason why we always talk about the spiritual realm. Watch who you bring into your houses. Be careful what you watch on TV. Mm -hmm. All of these things now are portals. These demonic spirits are looking for an avenue to come in. This is the reason why the scripture says that once a disagreeable being leaves out of the body, and this is real. I keep forgetting the name of that movie. What's the name of the movie with Denzel Washington where you can just touch a person and that disagreeable... Oh, yeah. Great movie. It, it, uh, fallen? It is fallen. Fallen, yeah. fallen yeah. yeah. So, the, listen, if the Father was to open up our spiritual eyes, there would be disagreeable beings that we would see all around us mm -hmm. waiting for that opportunity for somebody to fall and enter into that space. And all of a sudden, you no longer know that person anymore. Mm -hmm. The person starts to act demonic. People do act demonic. Once that person comes into the walk and recognizes Torah, mm -hmm. that disagreeable spirit now, now leaves the body, but it is always waiting. And he's waiting for that opportunity now because the next time he's coming back with seven disagreeable beings more stronger than he was. And so once now that disagreeable spirit enters into that body, the next time, it's going to be seven times harder to get rid of that disagreeable being. We have to be very, very careful of what we entertain. When Eve and Adam, because Adam was in the transgress under transgression, when Adam did not have his household in order, making sure that everybody's on one accord, the whole program fell. Everything fell. Mm -hmm. And because of Adam's fall, we're now in captivity, yep. mm -hmm. being disobedient. And so from the time of Adam's fall to today, we've been working to get back into the kingdom. 
But you said something key that moment. Right? When people fail to realize everything from the beginning of time has been about Israel. It has been, yes. From the garden all the way to Revelation, it was all about Israel. Even before Israel was coming to fruition or manifested in the physical, mm -hmm. the beginning, everything was always about them. That's right. A absolutely. So, um, Mr. McCombs, let's go to read four verses here and we'll be done. Um, the reason why, again, let me just read it. Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, I'm just going to read verses 1 through hmm, 1 through 4. And I'll stop. And I'll pick, pick it up again the following week. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against Gog. Okay? Gog is the seed of Japheth. All right? Something is about to happen in these latter days here. Therefore, thy son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog. Gog is the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal. I will turn thee back and I will leave but the sixth part of thee. These six parts that we had talked about before in Ezekiel the 38th chapter, when we began to talk about these plagues here. And I will cause thee to come up from not just the north, but the furthest most parts of the north. And I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite Japheth now, Gog, I will smite them, I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, you and all your bands, mm -hmm. and the people that is with thee. I will give Gog, Magog, Meshach, and Tobal. I will give them now to the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. I'm going to stop there because this is now going to really get into the lesson real hard. But I just wanted to share is that there's going to be a reunification. Everything that we've read about the Mashiach, about the mark of the beast, how we have to stand fast in these last days here. We have to. I don't care whether it's mother, brother, father, sister. It, it doesn't matter. It is not personal. What we're reading here. You don't want to be part of it. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you stay as close as possible, okay, to the Father. Mm -hmm. What we're going to be reading next week in Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, just take your time and just read it yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be on the Father's bad side. You really don't. So again, this covenant relationship that is talked about from Genesis to Revelation is key to our salvation. Anybody have any questions about anything? Because it's really getting to the point where, um, again, I would like to go out myself and, and, and congregate with other congregations. Okay. Let's see where they're at. Um, bringing more fruit, mm -hmm. showing um, our good works. Uh, we have a couple of congregations that uh, they're, they're, they're are very thankful for the gifts that we gave them. Um, I just want to network and see what else is going on in Israel. And I just want everybody to be able to stand up and also be able ministers for the Father. Oh, yeah. All right. So there's a lot that's going on. And, Maura, is there anything that you want to add? Um, Lord is yours. Just thank the most out for the uh, wonderful lesson by um, Senior Moray, Moray Kasada, about all the same to the Father. And just showing us how that we need to be prepared. Uh, we need to be in the right place uh, spiritually and physically. And just to get us to see how important this walk is and what it's going to require of us as individuals. And, you know, I just thank the most out for. Just the mindset, and it, it is so imperative that we see, and I hate to keep harping on it, that you understand what's going on around you. Like Maury was saying, when you saw that Brianna Taylor um, verdict and all of that stuff, let me tell you something. 
that was a clear message sent directly to a specific people. And if you are awake and the, your Ruach is active in you, you heard that message. You might want to be in denial. You might possibly, but, but you heard that message. Yes. And you heard that man when he told the proud boys uh, to stand, uh, what, stand down and stand by. Mm -hmm. He sent a direct message. He sent a message to his people. And what y'all fail to realize, these were the same people that voted him in office. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was these people that voted him office. That's right, Moray. They don't, that hear, them you. In. They don't hear you, Moray. I don't right. care how, how how big and how many people, they talk about how many votes they might get from um, the Democratic side of it. Let me tell you something. Those folks went out and voted. Nobody ever thought he would be Hillary. But did his people show up? Mm -hmm. And they show you what they stand for. Don't think they're going to change. What they stood for last election time, they're going to stand for it this time. Because you know what? Some of them very ones smiling in your face, guess what? They feel the same way. Because you can't be with them when they go behind the curtain or go into that box and vote. That's right. They can tell you one thing with lip service, but watch that finger and what it does. They good at that too. They want to yep. like a rug. And you're going to see it again. Mm -hmm. wow. well, what else has the Father been sharing with you? Because you shared some good news with us earlier. Now, um, your close affiliation now with uh, Emory and with um, the CDC and how the numbers are definitely growing. Mm -hmm. huh? And they are scared. Wow. Yep. And they're talking about how they, you know, they feel like the CDC has failed us. Let me tell you something. One thing the CDC cannot fight against mm -hmm. is that propaganda machine called the television. <laughs> <laughs> because y'all might not believe it. You know what news source has the most influence? It's Fox. Yeah. And Fox has, Trump has a, a machine behind him that whatever he pushes, because of, of the influence of Fox News, they can push it that much more further. And they're telling people, be careful. It's scary. These numbers that we're dealing with right now. But did they not tell you this back in the summer? Yes. Yeah. They said, come fall one. But everybody tried to act like they were speaking a foreign language. And now they're seeing the results of it. And did y'all get that article where they were talking about... Um, now they're going to try to make it mandatory or force the flu vaccine on babies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know that's going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. But I'm good, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Anybody have anything they would like to share? Okay, um... Okay, so what I'm going to do is vote a show far seven times. Uh, I definitely want to hook up with my brother out there in Union City uh, with the self defense classes. That that that's 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 real important too. That we uh, know how to protect ourselves. Uh, jab jab uh, with the with the, throw, throw the shoulders, mm -hmm. bring the head down, and, 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 and kick to the groin. Uh, I had a bad habit of only showing up like twice in the year. We know this, that. <laughs> no, it's up to the to the to the spots. But um, and they're like, man, don't come here and go hard, and then just we don't see you for. But um, I, I'm definitely gonna be going like a weekly, you know, yeah. just to stay up, stay in shape. Right. Stay, they, the long and short of it all, there's nothing going on out there that's gonna be helpful for your family, except for us as men to continue to build ourselves up and 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 cover all bases. And it's easier to do when we have other other men that that are taking those steps to do those things. You know, like what what I what I've seen is that every spiritually inspired person is covering something heavenly. So Sarsha Will is heavenly going into the combat. Um, Sarin mm -hmm. heavenly going into home and ministry. You know, 
us as heavily going into agriculture and mm. each of us all have a desire to cover those bases so we have to see the we know the message that America is telling us. We have to see mm-hmm. what is the message and who are letting us know. Yeah. We gotta gather ourselves together or you nation our desire. The long and short of it. Yes, yes. Let's continue uh um, to stay awake. Stay awake, stay awake, stay awake. I just wanna thank everybody for tuning in. Um and Mac, we have um I think that's Shair. And uh, Nakosi, Nakosi. Thank everybody for chiming in today. All right. Again, we're gonna say Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. I'm gonna blow the shofar seven times, and we'll have our executive moray to end us with prayer.